Thank you so much, everyone. And now to Pastor Dave McKee for our message. Good morning, church. Good morning. Now, those of you who are regulars here, you're probably saying to yourself, well, what's with the walker this morning? <laughs> I wish I had a really good answer for that, but uh, especially those of you who I ran into earlier in the week at the gym working out. Uh, what's the deal with the walker? Well, our, uh, my, my son, who's uh, in town uh, visiting us, blessing us over the Christmas holiday, we were just walking down the street and suddenly a sharp pain hit my knee and I, and I literally could not take another step. So I'll make a long story short, went over to Club Siena, called the ambulance, the ambulance took me to the hospital, spent nine hours of my life there <laughs> at, at the North Mantau Hospital and, uh, and I've been uh, re referred to a orthopedic uh, surgeon. Uh, I'll see this next week. So please pray for me. And uh, this kind of came out of the blue. I've, you know, I've had arthritis in my left knee for a while, but uh, this is something new. So appreciate your prayers going forward this uh, Christmas week. All right, now <clears throat> the title of this morning's message is Making Room for Jesus. And uh, if, uh, as you are able, I know I'm not, but as you are able, please stand for the reading of God's word. Luke 2, verses 1 through 7. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. This is the word of the Lord. Please be seated. The famous uh, evangelist, Luis Palau, uh, uh, once told a story about a very wealthy European family. Uh, they had decided to have their newborn baby baptized in their huge house they had. And so they invited dozens of guests and they, it was really an, an elaborate affair. The women wore evening gowns, the men wore black ties and tuxedos. Now, after depositing all their elegant clothes on the bed in an upstairs room, the guests were entertained royally. Soon the time came for the main purpose of their gathering the infant's baptismal ceremony. But where was the baby? No one seemed to know. The child's governess ran upstairs and returned with a desperate look on her face. Everyone searched frantically for the baby. Then someone recalled having seen him asleep on one of the beds. The baby was on the bed, all right, buried beneath a pile of coats, jackets, and furs. For you see, the object of that day's celebration had been forgotten, neglected, and nearly smothered. Palau continued, quote, the baby whose birthday we celebrate at Christmas is easily hidden beneath the piles of traditions and cultural observances of the season. We need to enter every Christmas season asking, where's the baby? Where is the baby? Unfortunately, 
Many people just do not have room for Jesus at Christmas. As you heard the reading from the Gospel of Luke, there was no room for the Lord Jesus in the end that first Christmas. But that is how it was with Jesus. It was that way during his adult life as well. As he himself said in Luke 9, verse 58, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. In fact, at the end of his life, the only place in Jerusalem that had room for him was on a Roman cross outside the city walls. So at his birth, there was no room for him. And in his death, there was no room for him. After he was crucified and died, he was even buried in a borrowed tomb. Now, there are reasons why at that first Christmas there was no room for the Lord Jesus. One reason was ignorance. Now, I certainly do not think that that innkeeper knew the baby about to be born was the Son of God. But Mary and Joseph knew. The lowly shepherds who were nearby tending their sheep would soon know. But the innkeeper did not. Another possible reason there was no room for Jesus was indifference. Think about it. What was going through the innkeeper's mind that would cause him to move a pregnant woman, a pregnant woman about ready to give birth, into a confined space with animals? He simply had no concern. He was indifferent. So was the innkeeper ignorant or indifferent? Or Perhaps the innkeeper was just too involved. After all, we know from Luke's gospel that there was a census being taken and people were going to their own towns to register. So there were a lot of people traveling around. Perhaps the innkeeper was just too busy, too involved with this, to be with this poor couple or to do anything for them that they're just visiting the city. They're just passing through. After all, his rooms were probably already filled with paying guests. Like some of you today, the innkeeper was so busy doing all these other things that he had no room for the Lord Jesus. But do not think that this was an accident. Do not think that God the Father, the creator of the universe, just forgot to make reservations at this inn for his son's birth. At all times, God is in control. For it was pro all that was prophesied in the Bible. Some 700 years before Jesus was born, the prophet Isaiah wrote about Jesus. Now, although Isaiah did not know all the details, he wrote this about whom he would know as the suffering servant. Isaiah 53, verse 3, quote, He was despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hid their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Could it be that, like the innkeeper, you also are ignorant, indifferent, and too involved? Christmas is supposed to be a happy time of the year, but for some of you it may be the saddest. Perhaps you have seen all the decorations and all the pretty lights and have tried to find some meaning in it. Or perhaps Christmas 
evokes bad memories for you. Memories of loss, separation, or hurts that have never been healed. Or perhaps everyone you know seems to have loved ones to be with, but you feel that you are unneeded, unwanted, and unloved. Well, if this is where you find yourself this Christmas, I have a good word for you this morning. Jesus is here. His name is Emmanuel, God with us. God loves you. He knows all about you. As Moses wrote in Psalm 90, God has set your, quote, secret sins, all your sins. He has set them in the light of his presence. And yet, he still loves you. He understands you. He knows your every weakness. As the psalmist wrote in Psalm 139, verse 1, O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Despite what you are, Jesus wants to have a relationship with you. So much so that he suffered and died on the cross for your sins. Yes, take hope this morning because the deepest needs of your life can be met in the one we call Jesus. Now, if you want to find the Lord Jesus this morning, you will not find him on the inside. He was not a religious insider. Jesus himself said in Luke 19, verse 10, for the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. No, you will always find the Lord Jesus with the outsider. As Jesus himself said in Matthew 5, verse 3, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Do not go to the warm comfort of the inn. Go to the cold stable with all the animal noises and smells. If you want to find the Lord Jesus, do not go into the city to be with the wealthy, the comfortable, those without earthly cares. Go to the outside of the city for that is where they crucified him. That is where he died and is where he was buried. And that is where on the third day he rose triumphantly from the dead. That is where you are going to find the empty tomb that speaks of hope, life, and joy to you this Christmas Eve. For you see, he is risen. He is risen indeed. Now, if you're looking for Jesus, you're not going to find him in the crowded stores in Hong Kong or in some bar or at some holiday party. That is not what Christmas is all about. It's not important this Christmas that you find yourself surrounded by people or things. It is of ultimate importance that you surround yourself with Jesus. But make no mistake, while the world has no room for Jesus now, it will not always be that way. When Jesus was here on earth the first time, he stood before and was judged by the Roman governor, Pontius Pilate. When Jesus comes again, Pilate will stand before him. 
And as the Apostle Paul explained in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 10, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may receive what is due for that he has done in the body, whether good or evil. When Jesus came the first time, he came as a baby. When he comes again, he will come as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. When Jesus came the first time, he was rejected. Even as he was dying, as he hung on the cross, he was mocked. The Bible tells us that, quote, those who passed by hurled insults at him. But as the Apostle Paul wrote in Philippians 2, verse 10, a time is coming when, quote, at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. There is no room for him now, but a time is coming when people will cry out, Make room for the king. What about you? Are you ready to give the Lord Jesus room in your life today? The Bible tells us that he came to his own and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Is there room for the Lord Jesus in your heart this Christmas? If you are not yet a follower of Jesus, that is, if you have not yet trusted in Jesus Christ in him alone for your salvation, come see the prayer partners or me after the service. I'll be right down here. If you have decided that it is finally time to make room for the Lord Jesus in your life, please come down and pray with us. Permit us to pray with you. Permit us to help you make this the best and most memorable Christmas yet. Let us pray. Dear Father, thank you for your great love that we remember this Christmas. We are especially mindful that we did not first love you, but that you first loved us. Grant that this Christmas we may express our faith through love. For we ask this in Jesus' name.